Hi guys. Well, a half an hour ago, it was a beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, but now, once again, it has crapped out into just another cool, gray, gloomy day as we kick off the last weekend of summer, Labor Day weekend. So that would make this Friday, September 3rd, 2021, here in the collapse. And, uh, so you know what that means. It is time for our weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where we head over to mongabay.com. Uh, but before we do, a couple more big thank yous. All right, people are feeling, I guess they're feeling rich again. I want to send out a big thank you to Sam Sam for being the newest patron here at Collapse Chronicles. Thank you very much, Sam Sam. And also a big thank you to both Larry and Tyler for their kind donations to my PayPal account, which is simply collapsechronicles at gmail.com. Anybody who has ever supported this channel, I really do appreciate it. And with that pleasant task out of the way, let's get into our usual unpleasant task of uh, diving into the mongabay.com roundup where we check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls to see uh, for their weekly laundry list uh, of assaults against this collapsing planet. I love it when Rhett starts off the very first story with a question. Before Caleb leaves, let's see if he knows the answer to this question. Caleb, will ropeless fishing gear be seaworthy in time to save endangered whales? Yes or no? Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Caleb has been drinking the Kool-Aid. Uh, Caleb knows as well as uh, Sacho Ponza and I know. The answer to the question is, will ropeless fishing gear be seaworthy in time to save endangered whales? The question is, of course, no. Uh, ropeless fishing gear uh, belongs in the Hopium Roundup Rant. So I'm going to, tomorrow, we're going to start the new Hopium uh, apocaloptimism roundup on Saturday. Fewer than 360 North Atlantic right whales are alive today. This was actually in the mainstream media today also, this story. Scientists blame the declining population on the twin tolls exacted by ship strikes and entanglement in fishing gear. Uh, so we're going to save the whales from the fishing gear. Uh, but of course, now the mainstream media actually was mentioning the third, uh, the triple toll, which is now they're just pretty much starving to death. So we have starving to death, getting hit by ships, and getting tangled up in fishing gear. All right. I think the jury is in once and for all and forever. <clears throat> New study offers the latest proof that the Brazilian Amazon is now a net CO2 source. The Brazilian Amazon rainforest has been transformed from a carbon dioxide sink to a source for new emissions over the past two decades, the latest study shows. <clears throat> While the Amazon as a whole has absorbed, has absorbed about 1.7 billion metric tons of CO2 over the past 20 years, the Brazilian portion alone, without even counting the other uh, six or seven countries, the Brazilian portion alone has emitted a net 3.6 billion metric tons during that period, which is more than twice 
the amount the entire Amazon has absorbed. Um, this study by the monitoring of the Andean Amazon project is unique because it was able to go deeper in analyzing changes in forest emissions. Um, satellite monitoring data show that formally formally protected areas and lands controlled by indigenous people hold the best hope for preserving the Amazon. Yes, we have to change that word formally to formerly. Formally protected lands every day becoming formerly protected lands. Dog, what do you, why are you so insistent that you want to look, I guess you're looking out the window, why don't you look out the front door for chippies and snakeies and stuff like that? All right, and again, guys, I only have a chance to touch on a few of these stories. Uh, so we're just going to move ahead. Uh, we're going to... Uh, so as I say, the hopium, do I put the Manga Bay hopium in Friday's Roundup or the Manga Bay's hopium in Saturday? I think we're going to move the uh, hopium in Manga Bay over uh, to, uh, I think we'll move the story, Sustainable Livelihood offers a lifeline to the Philippines dying rice terraces. Yeah, so I think we're going to put that one tomorrow. Okay, let's go down there to where I live for a couple of years. Down there to Peru. You will not believe this, guys. This is why, once again, I depend on, uh, on Manga Bay for my information. Did you realize that drug trafficking and illegal logging threaten indigenous communities in Peru? Yes, indigenous Quichua communities in northern Peru say outsiders are illegally invading their land and cutting down rainforest to plant coca and sell timber. Yes. Uh... <clears throat> Regional authorities say they cannot intervene in the area because they do not have the necessary security force, force to contend with armed criminal groups in the area. So pretty much the Peruvian military is just admitting defeat. But of course, uh, one of the reasons is because these, you know, these cocaine growers down there have the Peruvian armed forces on their payroll. Oh, boy. All right. We have one for Saturday. One for Saturday. Let's see. Move on. Looks like we have a lot of hopium. Uh... <coughs> You will not believe Italian firms flout European Union rules to trade in illegal Myanmar timber. <coughs> Negligible fines and inadequate enforcement <coughs> are turning Italy into a hot spot for illegal Myanmar timber, a new report is found. The report identified 27 Italian traders that have been importing Burmese teak. I like how they're going back to calling Myanmar Burma. Uh, 27 Italian traders that have been importing Burmese teak into Europe despite a long-held long -held common position of acknowledging the timber to be against the law. Yes. 
And then, of course, where do you think the timber is going? Uh, they just ship it off uh, to the rest of Europe and just pay off the fines. That the, these these joke little fines are just uh, the, you know the profit motive makes these fines all it is is a cost of doing business. I was talking the, you know to some pot grower in California uh, a couple of nights ago that just pay the fine, it, you know just grease the palm. Uh, it's just a cost of doing business. And uh, it's business as usual. <clears throat> okay. Let's, uh... Alright. Do we do some uh, Corona Panic? Uh, Alright, guys. For those of you who don't want to hear it, just turn the sound off for the next minute. <clears throat> okay. What is the latest survey of how the corona panic is, uh, quote, saving the planet? These people, uh, I won't mention some names. <clears throat> I'm already on enough shit list in the doomosphere who continue to assert that the corona panic has been good for the planet. All right. This is the latest study. Protected areas, the ecotourism industry, and many conservation initiatives and communities which depend on the tourism took a financial hit as COVID-19 lockdowns, you know, were and are still in place, as poverty swelled in these regions from the lockdowns, there has been an increase in poaching in Africa's protected areas uh, as more and more people who cannot uh, make money to buy food, where do you think they're going to go? As long as they can't make food and make money off of these, uh, you know, privileged, entitled white people, uh, take a wild guess. Anyway, enough of the C word. Uh, <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> I don't understand how Nigeria could have a still brisk pangolin trade. My God, it, 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 you know, by the news coming out of Nigeria about how many millions of pangolins was Nigeria, you know, I spent a month in Sub-Saharan Africa and I never once saw a pangolin never encountered a pangolin. In 1972, I never laid eyes on a pangolin. And, and if you add up the number of pangolins that have supposedly been killed on this planet uh, in the last 10 years, uh, it, it, it must be that Nigeria was carpeted. Uh, you know how they say how Derek Jensen is always talking about how you used to be able to, uh, before Honky got here to the U.S., that you used to be able to walk across rivers by stepping on the backs of uh, salmon. Apparently, you used to be able to walk across Nigeria uh, stepping on pangolin after pangolin that you could not move more than three feet, and there is still a brisk trade in pangolins. Uh, Nigerian law enforcement officials have recorded their third biggest seizure of pangolin scales ever, uh, indicating that the illegal pangolin trade has not been dented by the corona panic. All right. Okay, here is the uh, the NSS headline of the week. Rhett Butler himself writing this uh, writing this article. There is no climate solution 
without China and America. Uh, well, Rhett, there's no climate solution with China and America. Uh, and there sure as hell is no, anyway. <clears throat> China and the U.S. account for nearly half of the world's carbon dioxide emissions from energy, while the two countries' resource consumption is among the biggest threats to global biodiversity. These issues make China and the U.S. major targets for environmental activists like Greenpeace. Uh, there you go. Do you believe that China and the U.S. are lagging behind on their climate commitments? Yes. All right. Beyond climate, China and the U.S. have another opportunity to collaborate. T together, China and the U.S. can collaborate to avert the global extinction crisis via strong action and commitment at the upcoming UN Conventional on Biological Diversity. Yes, I think that one belongs in the Saturday uh, rant, rant. Oh, come on, what just happened? All right. Okay, we're going to uh, look at the podcast examining what works in conservation. Unfortunately, it's going to be a pretty short podcast. Yes, anyway, moving on. Well, guys, I guess I could make this... Uh, We have another, uh, I, did, I did not vet, I, I honestly did not vet uh, today's, uh, so for the second time, uh, if you don't want to hear about the C word, <clears throat> studies debunk the BS quote, nature is healing narrative from 2020 lockdowns, yes, several new studies have tried to tally up the cost and benefits to the environment as a result of lockdowns around the world last year in response to the corona panic. One study showed that emissions of the indirect greenhouse gases did decrease, but its authors say this likely will not have much of an impact. Another study debunks the media hype behind the quote, animals are reclaiming the cities, close quote, trend last year, <clears throat> attributing those increased sightings to the fact that people forced to stay home finally had time to start noticing the wildlife that's always been around them. In India, researchers concluded there were more negatives than positives for the environment, including a surge in the use of plastic packaging and personal protective equipment as people shopped online and masked up, talking, uh, you know, referring to uh, the, uh, m you know, these billions of masks uh, going to littering the landscape. More, there, there's, you know, more than pangolins littering the landscape in Nigeria. Uh, these masks. But anyway, I'm going to shut up now. But uh, for those of you who follow some other person who shall remain nameless, uh, I understand that someone else in the Doomosphere today is going to be uh, 
going more in depth on this story. So you can go find that story for anybody who wants to uh, handle the truth about the C word. Do you believe that a giant mine is polluting Madagascar's water with uranium and lead? Yes. <clears throat> Some sites near a Rio Tinto owned mine, and doesn't Rio Tinto basically mean Ink River? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, in Madagascar have recorded uranium and lead levels 52 and 40 times uh, in excess of um, you know, these UN safe drinking water standards. Uh, Yep, yep. Uh, so, from Madagascar to Angola, toxic spill at Angola diamond mine pollutes Congo River tributary in DRC. Yes, in early August, toxic substances from three diamond processing facilities in neighboring Angola polluted the Kasai River a major tributary of the Congo. Researchers fear there could be severe and lasting consequences for the environment and people's health. Yes, the polluted water is now moving toward the capital Kinshasa. Yes. According to the DRC's Minister for the Environment and Sustainable Development, yes, the Democratic Republic of the Congo's Minister for Sustainable Development. Thank you for that knee slapper. Uh, let's come over here to our own country. North American paper industry merger sets off environmental alarm. Yes. Uh, this is Canadian firm Paper Excellence plans to acquire U.S. pulp and paper giant Domtar, signaling uh, an expansion in North America, something that environmentalists say will threaten Canada's boreal forest. This is because paper excellence in turn is reportedly controlled by the owners of Indonesia's Asia pulp and paper which has a long track record of deforestation, forest and human rights violations. Yes, uh, I got to skip ahead. Good Lord, guys, I'm only halfway through here. Uh, all right, Indonesia. Indonesia is going after illegal fishing kingpins. Indonesia's fishery ministry has pledged to target the ultimate beneficiaries of fisheries-related crimes in the country. Yes, the fishing kingpins. For a long time, the only people who faced any kind of prosecution for illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing were typically the crews of the vessels themselves caught in the act, while the owners of the vessels where they could be identified, avoided any kind of punishment. Indonesia hosts one of the world's richest fisheries, but the industry is notorious for its convoluted webs of corporate ownership and vessel registration often spread across various jurisdictions, which help mask the beneficial owners of fishing activity. 
Do you think so? And again, guys, I have to... Uh, good Lord, this goes on and on. Uh, all right, I think... To, I think this one might have to show up tomorrow. Building the campaign for nature. Yes, uh, how this billionaire uh, is trying to save 30% of the planet in this 30 by 30. Okay. Quoting the billionaire, Global leaders have not given biodiversity the attention it warrants. Most global leaders do not fully understand the val or value the importance of biodiversity and are not aware of the scale of the current crisis facing biodiversity. Yes, as he hands over one billion dollars to protect 30% of the planet. All right, then we have a new article on uh, rhinos getting ready, uh, looking at the low genetic diversity and uh, the world's remaining rhinos. All right, here is more about climate change in the Amazon. Yes. Brazil nuts, acai berries, andoroba oil, rubber, cacao, and whatever kupaku fruits are just some of the products at risk of disappearance or reduced production in the next 30 years. Do you think so? In addition to climate change's environmental impact on these resources, the social impact of climate change will bring worsening poverty and an exodus of traditional people to urban areas. Anyway... Uh, good luck on this. Grain production depends on ending deforestation. I thought that grain production meant increasing deforestation. Yes, recent scientific studies confirm what Brazilian farmers already feel in practice the uncontrolled production of agricultural commodities is destroying the productivity and profits of agribusiness itself, a cycle researchers are calling agro-suicide. Yes. Uh, Resulting financial losses are expected to reach at least four and a half billion dollars annually by 2050, according to one conservative estimate. But if deforestation continues unchecked, damage to the to the agribusiness industry could reach nine billion dollars per year. Anyway, uh, all right, what is going on? Good Lord, guys, this goes on and on and on and on. I just have time for the headlines. Okay, uh, let's see, just the headlines. My God. Uh, all right. Fires rage in Bolivia's Chicatania region. Okay, that's Bolivia. Um, how about, let's go over there to, 
what's going on with fires in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a Los Angeles-sized tract of primary rainforest went up in flames in one DRC province in 2020. Uh, 580 square miles of old growth forest burned, uh, including extensive tracks inside a nature reserve. Overall, the DRC recorded its second biggest decline in primary forest cover last year. Uh, forests in the country face increasing <clears throat> pressure from a constellation of factors, a growing population, climatic shifts, and more recently, corona panic linked turmoil taking down the forest in the Congo. Okay. <clears throat> With Myanmar's Press muzzled, experts warn of a surge in environmental crimes. Yes, this is, you know, that military coup uh, has resulted in a sweeping uh, clampdown of, on press freedoms. Yes. <clears throat> As conflict and violence spreads throughout the country, monitoring forest illegal logging and the associated illicit trade on the ground is increasingly <clears throat> risky. Experts say they fear the circumstances are ripe for over-exploitation of natural resources. Uh, gee. You will not believe this. Independent monitoring suggests a sharp jump in Amazon rainforest destruction. I see Rhett Butler wrote this. Uh, you know, I'm not taking credit for this. <coughs> but, you know, <coughs> two weeks ago, uh, Rhett was reporting that, uh, that deforestation, according to the Brazilian government, was down in July. I sent Rhett this article claiming, no, it was actually up 57%. Rhett uh, emailed me back saying, well, Sam, it all depends on who is doing the reporting. And now I see... Uh, I see Rhett uh, coming in with independent monitoring shows sharp jump in Amazon rainforest uh, destruction. Independent analysis released last week by a Brazilian non-governmental organization provides evidence of a sharp increase in the rate of forest destruction in Earth's largest rainforest over the last year. Uh, so if you want to believe the non-government organizations, last year saw the highest deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon since at least 2008. Uh, while the Brazilian government is saying it's going down. Uh, fully recyclable paper cups? They exist, but you will not find them at Starbucks. And we're going to wind up with this story that actually showed up on the mainstream media. We're going to wind up, wind up in, in uh, Sumatra Mother tiger and her cubs found dead in Sumatran forest. The tigers were caught in a snare trap in Indonesia's Lucere ecosystem. The Sumatran tiger is cr a critically 
endangered species with only a few hundred left in the wild. Yep, yep, yep. Say goodbye to the Sumatran tiger heading the way of the Nigerian pangolin. But anyway, guys, we have to wrap up this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant. Say goodbye to Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at Manga Bay because, good Lord, it is Labor Day weekend. And I have got to get out and start cleaning up uh, the tiny house, the camper, and the campground as uh, we have a big flood of visitors heading to uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm this weekend. So the little dog and I uh, have to get to work in the ecotourism business, which is, I don't know how much the corona panic is uh, affecting my business here this year, but uh, the hurricane slamming in New York, I was figuring it out yesterday. The hurricanes in New York have cost me almost $2,000 this past month. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your ecotourism while you still can. Bye, guys.